She is said to be the most powerful woman in fashion, and she does nothing to dispel that belief. Her name is Anna Winter, a name that strikes terror in some, loathing in others, and transforms yet others into obsequious toadies. It should also be said she commands a loyal band of friends and admirers. Nevertheless, she was the inspiration for the novel and movie, The Devil Wears Prada. For 21 years, this divorced mother of two has been editor of Vogue, the last word in sophisticated fashion and fantasy. The aura of mystery that surrounds the 59-year-old Winter is palpable. She is a paparazzi and gossip column magnet. Every twitch, every frown, every suppressed smile is recorded. She's been portrayed as Darth Vader in a frock. Or less harshly, as Nuclear Winter. Or is she really just peaches and cream with a touch of arsenic? The blurb on your unauthorized biography reads, she's ambitious, driven, needy, a perfectionist. An inside look at the competitive bitch-eat-bitch world of fashion. An accurate... Uh, well, I'm very driven by what I do. I am certainly very competitive. What, what else am I, needy? Uh, uh, I'm probably very needy, yes. Um, a bitch. Perfectionist? Perfectionist. Well, let's try bitch first. <laughs> bitch. Um, well, I, I hope I'm not. I, 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 I try not to be, but uh, I like people who represent the best of what they do, and if that turns you into perfectionist, then maybe I am. High above Times Square, Anna Winter oversees a small okay. army of girls, coiffed, skinny, beautiful, and running scared. The worker bees whose job it is to inspire women to dream. The pages of Vogue conjure up a never-never land of beauty, of the sweet life. The unattainable comes to life in the up to 800 pages per issue. Under Anna Winter's direction, Vogue has been hugely successful. Vogue is the best of everything that fashion can offer, and I think we're the leader in the field. We point the way. We are, you know, a glamorous girlfriend. But the glamorous girlfriend, like Vogue readers, is facing leaner times. I do want to make the point that September really has to be about value, but we don't want um, to give up completely the dream and the fantasy, but I also feel like we need to have a, a, a sense of being more grounded. Winter is involved in every detail of the magazine, the clothes. I like the style. Editing the pictures and articles. Can I see Meredith, please? She's decisive, impatient, and bears a look that says, I'm the boss and you're boring. Yeah, I just thought that was a bit banal. Should I do the faces of the moment because that's what we have on the cover? Or just still keep thinking? Keep thinking. An editor is, in the final analysis, a kind of dictator. A magazine is not a democracy. It's a group of people coming together and presenting ideas from which I pick what I think is the best mix for each particular issue. But in the end, the final decision has to be mine. Meet Miranda Priestley, the beastly editor in The Devil Wears Prada. Meryl Streep so is Anna Incarnate. Is there some reason that my coffee isn't here? Has she died or something? I've heard that Miranda Priestley is just a teddy bear compared to Anna Winter. It was entertainment. It was not a true rendition of what happens within this magazine. I understand that. But where people made comparisons with you mm -hmm. is the coldness that Anna must not be spoken to when she's on the elevator. Oh, yeah, I heard that. You're not allowed to get in the elevator with me. <laughs> well, you can get on, but just keep your mouth shut. That's a, a complete exaggeration. I mean, I guess in response, I can only say that I've had, I have so many people here, Molly, that have worked with me for 15, 20 years. And, you know, if, the, if I'm such a bitch, they must really be a glutton for punishment well, because they're a, still here. I wouldn't use the word bitch. I would say a certain coldness. We're here to work. We're I here understand. to work. And there's on-duty time and off-duty time. And in the end... We're drawn together by our passion for the magazine and our respect and friendship for each other. And if one comes across sometimes as being cold or brusque, it's simply because I'm striving for the best. It's not like a tea party here. We work very hard. Andre Leon Talley, Vogue's editor at large. He's worked with Anna for decades. What kind of boss is she? Let's say that Anna can be intimidating. I think that's her armor to intimidate, to give the people a sense that she is in charge. 
I have been asking to see those books. Like Mine's this tomorrow. week, okay, you is, is your deadline. She is not a person that's gonna show you her emotions ever. She's like a doctor. I mean, she's looking at your work. It's like a medical analysis. Some of us can't cope with that. We need to be loved. That chance of that, says Vogue creative director Grace Coddington, another veteran colleague. I think she enjoys not being completely approachable. You know, just her office is very intimidating, right? You have to walk about a mile into the office before you get to her desk. And I'm sure it's, you know, intentional. Have you ever seen her looking less than perfect? No. Never? No. Has, always. That must take terrific discipline. I think she's a very disciplined woman. Also a very pampered one. Condé Nast, her publisher, picks up the bill for her hair and makeup every day of the week. And her rumored $200,000 a year clothing allowance. You've made yourself the personification of Vogue. I mean, look at you, not a hair out of place. Do you feel that that's your mission in life, to appear perfect? It's very important to me that I look good when I go out publicly. I like looking at my clothes rack in the morning and deciding what to pick out. I enjoy fashion. Molly, I mean, I, I wouldn't be in this job if I didn't. Why the sunglasses? Well, they're seriously what? useful. I mean, I can sit in a show and if I'm bored out of my mind, nobody will notice. And if I'm enjoying it, uh, nobody will notice. So I, I think at this point they've become, you know, really armor. Winter was born in London, the daughter of Charles Winter, editor of the London Evening Standard. He was a tough-minded intellectual and had dropped out of high school at 16. I wasn't academically successful, and maybe I've spent a lot of my career trying to make up for that. Your father, who I knew only slightly in, right. in England, had a tough reputation. Yes, um, Chili, not, Ch Chili Charlie. Not, not unlike yours, and his reporters were scared of him. Yes, but look what he created. I mean, he created a great newspaper. And I certainly did learn this from him. People respond well to someone who's sure of what they want. And Anna Winter is nothing but sure. That's most apparent when twice a year, Her Majesty takes her place at the ready-to-wear fashion shows in New York, Paris, and Milan, where she sits in judgment of the work of the world's most eminent designer. To an outsider, these shows are another planet, part dazzling, part rocky horror show. Models who seem as angry as they are emaciated, wearing clothes fit for a cadaver, and shoes that make stilettos seem sensible, and a legion of camp followers and campy followers, chasing the celebrities du jour and the people who dress them. You come here to be inspired, you come here to, to see the best of the best and one just wants to rush back and put it in the pages of the magazine and translate it as fast as you can to the reader. It's a planet where Winter feels comfortably at home, where she acts as cheerleader, power broker and consultant. What bores you? Mediocrity. If you see a collection that is, you feel the designer has been lazy or taking inspiration from other designers, it doesn't so much as bore me as, uh, as anger me. Neither Vogue nor Anna will openly criticize designers. She just omits them from the magazine. Death by anonymity. The kind of power Hello. that makes designers like Karl Morning. Lagerfeld, Morning. who this season favors the Dracula Thanks. look, sing her praises. She is the most famous fashion uh, journalist in the world. She says what she thinks. That's why some people think sometimes she is a little tough, but I like tough people and I like tough women. She has to give a cold image to keep things going. That's not that easy, huh? It's like running a madhouse of fashion magazine. <laughs> when she drops in on a designer, it is make or break time. And it goes with belt. Nicholas Gasquier of Balenciaga is anxious to please. Like, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> Do you keep her in mind when you're working on a new collection? There is always a moment when you question if Anna will like it or not, for sure. I think <laughs> ev any designer who says uh, the contrary would lie. John Galliano, who designs for Dior, who some might think needs a better tailor, calls Winter his fairy godmother. Oh my goodness, in all my success, I mean, without her support, I certainly wouldn't be at the house of Dior today. Uh, she's an eye. To have an eye is key. Bernard Arnault, who has a better tailor and owns Dior, 
is the chairman of LVMH, the largest luxury conglomerate in the world. When Winter recommended to the richest man in France Thank that he you. hire Galliano, it was implicit Sorry, that Vogue would feature Galliano's designs. When I uh, hired John, I discussed at length with her. Obviously, at the time, it was a risk because he was not as well known as he is today. But uh, I was comforted by Anna about what he could do, and uh, finally I took the risk. That gives you a remarkable kind of power, much more power than any mere editor-in-chief of a magazine normally has. Well, we can advise, Morley. We, we can't dictate. And obviously, in the end, those gentlemen will make, are very capable of making up their own minds. But they have the remarkable habit of going along with your ideas. Well, we can only point them in that direction. <laughs> she does even more. She helps choose the next generation of designers. For example, this young man, Alexander Wang. So what do you have to show us? It's a mutually beneficial relationship that gives Vogue an inside track on the next hot designer. And how much is that one, Alexander? This one retails for 1200 It's okay. very reasonable. Reasonable, perhaps, if you happen to have a $200,000 clothing allowance. But for sheer glitz, nothing beats the soiree at New York's Metropolitan Museum. Thank you so much for everything. Every year, Anna organizes a benefit which so far has raised nearly $50 million for the museum's Costume Institute. When Anna calls, the fashion houses are only too eager to cough up as much as $250,000 a table. This year, there's a certain nervous splendor to this recession procession. Nevertheless, the want-to-be-seen show up in hordes. Tonight, the rag trade rules. A night to flaunt it, whatever it is. Anna in total control, despite the rumors that in these really thin economic times, and after 20 years on the throne, her days may be numbered. Are you thinking that it may soon be time to pack it all in? Not at all. I mean, to me, that this is a really interesting time to be in this position, and I think it would be, in a way, irresponsible not to put my best foot forward and... and to lead us in, into a, a different time. Do you see uh, out there in these outer offices some young upstart quietly taking the measures of this office? Probably several. But uh, when the time comes, will you go quietly? Certainly, very quietly.